Hi, I'm Mark Lauchs, Extension Wheat Scientist with Ohio State University. I'm standing in some of our research plots at the OERDC Western Ag Research Station in South Charleston. Uh, we're out here today spraying some of our early post-emergent treatments on corn. Um, still got some soybeans to put in once it dries out. Um, getting a lot of calls right about now in tough, for pro, tough burn down situations. Um, and one of the things, obviously, if you didn't do anything in the fall and you haven't done anything up until now, you may be looking at a situation like this uh, with just a lot of weeds. It's a good time to reinforce that all the plots we have that we did do something in the fall um, really still stay clean and we don't have a situation like this. So one of the things you're trying to accomplish always with a fall treatment is um, to create an easy burn down situation for the spring and in a year like this when we get uh, start to get late because we have continual rainfall, um, you don't end up with a situation like that. So I'm saying in a couple of the plots that did get treated, um, and of course anything we did um, earlier with a decent burn down treatment generally looks pretty good, um, as you can see the plots here on my right, um, smaller weeds being easier to kill. Um, we, it is a tough year, we're having one of those years where even our very good treatments on mare's tail are sort of struggling, a uh, plot here that had uh, several different burn down herbicides on it and you can see the, the plot's basically clean. There's some foxtail coming up now and some mare's tail that did survive that. So we're having one of those years when it's a little bit difficult to kill mare's tail, cool weather or whatever. Um, and you know, we, you do have years like that in mare's tail. It can be a tough weed to burn down, period. And then as you get into mare's tail that are this size, um, along with all the other weeds that are here, you know, this is a really tough burn down situation. So if you look at some of your options here about now, um, you know, one of the problems we get into is we get this late and everybody starts to get antsy about planting soybeans and you, you know, one of the reactions is, okay, we're going to pull the 2,4-D out of the burn down mix and I can tell you that's generally not a good thing to do in a situation like this. Our standard recommendation for mare's tail this big really is everything that you can afford to put in the tank just about. So we're assume, you're assuming you're mostly still going to use glyphosate because you're going to need glyphosate to control really um, a range of weeds that are this big. You can try to substitute Gramoxone or Liberty in that burn down, but, but uh, Liberty especially doesn't handle a lot of uh, no-till weeds that are really this big, even with some other herbicides with it. Um, Gramoxone, Sencor plus 2,4-D, you know, may handle the rest of these. But our standard recommendation, at least the one that I've been making on mare's tail that's, that's this big, really is um, uh, a combination of, assuming you're still going to use glyphosate, keep 2,4-D in the tank still, you know, the maximum rate you can use is a half pound seven days before planting. A herbicide that has saflufenacil in it, either Verdict or Sharpen, um, and the rate that you can use up close to planting is no more than an ounce of, of Sharpen. Um, and then Metribuzin. Ideally, you have Metribuzin in the tank as well. Uh, mare's tail that gets this big, it's sort of an all bets are off situation. So you can prescribe a glyphosate Sharpen, or a glyphosate 2,4-D, or Sharpen plus Metribuzin. The problem is, you know, um, none, of these are, none of those are gonna be as effective um, as combining uh, all of those. And so again, one of the issues you do get into if you're going to do that um, is consideration of the residual herbicides that you're using. So if you haven't applied your residual herbicides up to this point because you have a situation like this um, and you're gonna try to use Sharpen or uh, in that mix um, and you've got a Valor Authority product, the label still says you have to wait two weeks to plant. So you know, one of your options there is to switch that out and decide, okay, I'm going to go to another type of burn down. You know, products that just have metribuzin in them might add more metribuzin to that. Something like Canopy DF, which has some metribuzin, add another four to six ounces to that. Matador is a product that fits in there. Uh, Boundary. Um, there, there have been some uh, growers over the years who have done something like a Canopy with a Boundary, um, which can be a good mix here. So, you know, some consideration of the residual herbicides that you're using there. We don't typically recommend. Um, in that mix to use only metribuzin as your residual. Um, you, you can, it's generally good on small seeded broadleaf weeds. It gets, starts to get really weak on common ragweed, giant ragweed, uh, velvet leaf. Um, so you're generally better off to do something like a canopy DF with some metribuzin um, to get you where you need to be. The other thing is the consideration of your adjuvants and your volume. So to remember, um, Sharpen always, any saflufenacil um, product's gonna need MSO with it methylated seed oil to maximize activity. Um, and the minimum volume that um, specified there is 15 gallons per acre. And you can easily make a case, I think, in a situation like this to bump volume up. And there isn't gonna be any drawback to increasing volume except uh, more trips across the field. 
Um, anytime you're using contact products, Metribuzin and Sharpen being the contact products here, or if you're using Gramoxone and you're in a situation like this, it's a lot of stuff to cover. They're getting big. You're trying to cover mare's tail as well as you can. So going to more like 20 gallons per acre or more will probably help you out a little bit.